Hello, well, if you're new to your uh, vacuums, or if you want to know how to pair up your uh, vacuum to your smartphone, well, this is the perfect video for you. This is my beginner's guide to your uh, vacuums. I kind of walk you through the features and some of the things that these uh, vacuums share. All right, let's go and get started. Okay, so let's go and get this guy set up. Um, if you never set up a real vacuum, it's pretty straightforward. It's kind of like setting up a voice assistant, a smart TV, or any smart device. So. Usually what I like to do is have the dock station in a nice open area, but for this example, I want to demonstrate these oil vacuums can dock in tighter areas as well. Okay, so I got my charging dock right here, and I plugged in my power cable, so I'll go ahead and just plug that in. And there's an indicator light letting you know if you have power, so you can just place that there. Okay, make sure everything's nice and straight. Okay. So for this particular model, uh, there's a physical power switch, so you just want to make sure that's flipped on and the robot itself will start booting up. And you can also take off this plastic wrap so these sensors work a little better. Wow, that was a beautiful sound. Okay, it looks like we'll boot up and this thing's just sticking on me here. Nope. Welcome to use the LaFont robot vacuum. Please scan the body QR code, download the correct app, and connect to internet to get a better experience. So just locate the charging contacts by up to the uh, dock here. Start charging. Get this out of there. Okay, so you can let this sit for a few hours to uh, get charged up because after we pair up the app, we usually want to map out the floor plan. With this model, it usually takes the entire cleaning run to map out, but some models have quick mapping, so it may be a little bit quicker. All right, so there's a QR code right here. So I'm going to take my uh, spot device and scan it. See if it pops up here. Yep. And it should take me to the website. So the app looks like it's called Live and Life. All right, we'll go ahead and install it. And while it's installing, you can uh, check uh, what the app's all about. Looks like it's done pretty well, 4.7 stars so far. Kind of gives you a walkthrough of the app. And I do apologize, my internet's a little slow, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward for a bit so you don't have to uh, sit here and wait for the internet to uh, download this app. Hold on one second. Okay. All right, you can cut now. Cut! It was longest download. Wow, I should really upgrade my internet. All right, so we are back. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the app here. And what we're going to do is log in if you already have a username and password. But if you don't, you can just sign up. Usually it just asks for the email address and then uh, basically a password. So let's see if I have an uh, account here. I can't recall if I do. So I put my uh, YouTube email address. All right, so we got in here. Let's go ahead and do all these OKs. Yeah, we can see notifications. Show it to on Bluetooth and... <laughs> oh, okay, excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and add a device. And this, I would I say this was the LS20. So look for the one with the hump. Let's see, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, okay, so we go LS, there we go, LS1. All right, we'll go ahead and put in my information here. All right, so once you put your Wi-Fi password, just be remember it's only 2.4 gigahertz. The five gigahertz frequency does not work. And we're going to reset the device. So yes, the device is on. And we're going to hold down the start pause button for about three seconds. All right, let's go and do that. Start charging. Please connect to the wireless network according yep. the instructions to the mobile app. We are flashing. So I got to guys say the voice on this actually sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound like it's some Chinese voice trying to act like it's speaking English. So good job, Lipman. Actually, this is the first male voice. Usually they're female voice. It's called the Spot Life. And then we jump back into the app. And now it looks like it's uh, pairing up. Just takes a few uh, minutes here. And sometimes the robot will uh, ask for a software update as well. So I would leave sufficient time. Usually, um, if you're new to this, give about 30 minutes or so. Connection but, successful. So, Let's just go ahead and take a look at the app here. Uh, it looks like we have uh, the ability to create no-go zones. We can do a 
drop a pin and have it go to that area. And I believe this model can save up to three different maps. Down here we have smart cleaning, which will clean the entire area. Uh, we have selected cleaning, zone cleaning, and again, you can drop a pin down to go to a specific area. Now let's go and do the edit here. So we can edit the name, whatever you like to call it. Um, we have device information, uh, just, just random information here. And yes, we do have an update. So I do recommend setting up to automatic update. Um, because Lose battery. Please upgrade the firmware after a full charge. Okay, so let's take a look at the mapping process. Now, if you're using this robot for the first time, it should have a blank map. But if you do have a map currently showing, you have the option to clear the map out or you can create a new one. Now, once we clear the map out, we should have a blank screen. And all we have to do is just press the clean button and it will in fact will automatically create a new map for us. Start cleaning. Okay, so here's some tips and tricks. Now, when you map out, the Royal Vacuum does have to start from the docking station and in the docking station without much interruptions. Sometimes, if they do get interrupted, they may have the capability of resuming where they left off. But it's best recommended to try to pick up your area, open up all the doorways where the robot can reach. Uh, most models do not allow you to add on to the map once the map is complete, so it does require a new map. Right now, this robot is actually trying to relocate itself, but since there's no map, the robot will realize it's not in a known location, so it will create a new map. Now, once the robot's doing that, it will go out and do an entire cleaning session. This process usually takes about an hour and a half to two hours, cover my entire 2700 square foot home. Now, there's different types of methods these robot vacuums can map. This model uses LiDAR, which is the most advanced, and also provides the most detail in the map. Now, if you have one that uses a camera system, yep, like your cell phone, it takes about one to three cleaning runs. The map itself isn't as advanced, isn't as high resolution, but it works well. And finally, if you have a simpler robot that uses gyros and accelerometers, well, the map looks pretty bad, but you know what, it works nevertheless. All right, let's talk about how these robot vacuums navigate. They have various sensors. For this particular model, there's a physical bump sensor, also there's a suite of infrared sensors, there's side sensors, and also sensors to detect uh, drop-offs like stairs. Now, as you can see, this robot vacuum is doing a pretty good job navigating these bar stool style chair legs. Some robot vacuums struggle with this. Also, the robot vacuum has the ability to stay away from this area if you find that this area is troublesome. Well, there's not a one size fits all. Some people like all the extra features, or they need a little vacuum that can run forever because they have a larger house. But regardless of what model you get, most of these little vacuums share a lot of the same features. So let's talk about them. For example, they all have a scheduling feature, which allows the little vacuum to go out at a specific time, kind of like a alarm clock, then return once it's done. Also, if you have a more advanced robot, you may be able to tell it to go to clean a specific room. Now, a lot of these robot vacuums, if they have smart navigation, can stay out of certain areas, or you can tell it to clean a specific area, which I'll demonstrate later on in this super long video. So let's go ahead and look at some of the features that this particular model has. The first thing we're going to look at is area cleaning. Most of these robot vacuums have this type of feature. Now, usually you take a handle, which is like a corner of the object and you can just kind of drag it to create a square or a rectangle within the app. Now sometimes it takes practice to line up exactly where to place that area so I recommend making it a little bit bigger than the actual cleaning area. Now why would you do that? Well there's a couple benefits. For stars it saves time since so it's only cleaning that specific area. Also if you have delicate objects or a lot of stuff on the ground it might be useful to have the robot just clean that area. Alright, so the next thing is I'm going to drop down a pin and the robot will actually go to that area to clean. Finally, we have a remote control feature. Some robots have it, some don't. So it's nice if you want to drive the robot physically to a location and have it clean. Well, if you're still around, I want to congratulate you. I know this was a pretty cut and dry tutorial, but I just kind of want to showcase some of the features and how to set up your new robot vacuum. This tutorial applies to basically any robot vacuum you may have. The setup process is very familiar, and most of these robot vacuums will have a very familiar app layout and also features. 
Now, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments down below, or you can email me at nate2003 at comcast.net. And I want to thank Linfin for sending out this model. I use it as my demonstration. It's a basic model, but it works well, and I thought it would be great for this tutorial. So, have a great rest of your summer or winter, wherever you are, and stick around. I'll have some more products, and thank you so much for watching.